Kitabura Village School, nestled in a steep valley in the remote north of Rwanda, the so-called land of a thousand hills. Open your computers, okay? Open your computers. The school's pupils have recently been chosen to take part in the government's ambitious One Child, One Laptop program. It's to equip them with skills that will enable them to play an active role in 21st century life. Of Rwanda. Yet just two years ago, none of this would have been possible, for the communities living in this area had no access to electricity. Children couldn't study after dark, and logging onto the internet was a distant dream. Since we've had electricity, the quality of education has improved. The children have now had access to the internet and we're going with the technology of today. The electricity powering change in this part of Rwanda comes from a small-scale hydroelectric plant near the village. Driven by water from the Mutobo River, it provides electricity to some 5,000 people in the areas nearby. In a country where only a fraction of the population has access to electricity, it's a major breakthrough. The majority of Rwanda's 13 million people live in remote rural areas that the government considers too expensive to connect to the national grid. But small-scale plants like this one of four constructed in partnership with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization are a cost-effective and environmentally friendly way of bringing power to the people. Jamari Modesta, a baker in the nearby village of Cabaret, is among the thousands benefiting from the Mutobo plant. <laughs> We chose to come and work here because this machine uses electricity. Without electricity, it will not work. We also use high-quality flour, and it is very expensive to make the bread by hand. The electricity helps us to work very fast and to bake a higher-quality product. But it's not just Jamari who's benefiting from the bakery. The money it generates is also funding the studies of her 20-year-old brother-in-law, Pascal. Pascal is now in the second year of a business studies course. His parents are poor, and were it not for this business, he would have to drop out. I, I get the money from here for school fees, and I get money for buying those things, notebooks, pens, soaps, shoes, uh, and I get the ticket from here at Rangeli to Mutra Polytechnic by the bus. This ceremony marks the handing over of the Mutobu hydroelectric plant to the local community. It's a day of celebration, as the plant has now been operational for two years and local people are aware of the benefits electricity can bring. Person, person, nobody. There's nobody who doesn't want electricity. Everybody needs it. The Rwandan government's target is to extend access to electricity to half the population by 2017. It's part of an ambitious program of projects aimed at transforming Rwanda from war-torn nation to a magnet for investors. Previously we thought we would take electricity where demand is. But we have realized that when we take electricity there, we create demand. So where we have managed to connect electricity, where we have managed to put those mini hydros, lives of the people have changed. The Rwandan capital Kigali is evidence of the progress that's already been made. The city boasts a new road network, street lighting and free-flowing traffic. The country's economy is among the fastest growing in Africa. But it's pupils like these, computer savvy, idealistic and eager to learn, that the country's main hopes for the future rest on. The first generation to have been born after the 1994 genocide, they're learning new skills that it's hoped will help build a Rwanda everyone can be proud of.